everybody, Pat Windrow once again at the Cable Easel with a program of painting and drawing from life. And a lot of the times it's going to be landscapes because local origination is what this station is all about and the idea is to go out and allow people to find uh, subject matters in the landscape field that are nearby and available and certainly not to copy from books. So this one is uh, on the North Shore in uh, a hamlet of Setauket, and it's one of the more beautifully situated churches uh, on the island. It is on a wonderful hill overlooking uh, Setauket Harbor when the leaves are off the trees, of course, and it's been there since 1870, which is really uh, remarkable because it's a wooden structure. Uh, stone structures can stand for thousands of years, but wooden structures are something else again. However, this one is not only graceful and a loved, wonderful sight, but it's beautifully made Maintained. And so uh, kudos and cheers to the people who, uh, to, who do that. And uh, I took a moment before this uh, taping took place in order to do some architectural laying out because it's always important to have the to have the architectural part of a um, of a painting correct, because uh, you, if you if you if it's crooked, it's uh, something that you can't live with. And the lines of of anything architectural um, have to be done with some time. And uh, of course, I like to make sure that people are going to remain interested in what I'm doing. So I did a slight pencil sketch, uh, not only from the monitor here, but also from the site itself. Uh, when when uh, when the crew went out to take uh, this um, this taping of this scene, so that it can be projected once again in the studio and work from that. It was, um, it was a, uh, a perfectly beautiful day and I took the opportunity of doing a sketch at the same time on this canvas. This is a smaller canvas than I usually work on. Uh, first of all, it's to introduce a smaller canvas to the audience. Uh, large canvases are okay. They take a great deal more paint. They take a lot more time and they also require a larger frame, which means uh, that expenses uh, uh, mount up somewhat. However, small paintings are not easier to do than large ones. Uh, they are sometimes far more difficult. So uh, there are, there's something on the plus side for the economy of the size of the canvas, the frame, and the paint, but it also means that um, there is a certain difficulty which is may, maybe not anticipated uh, by the person who is beginning to, to do some kind of an architectural rendering. The smaller the better because then you can in fact reduce it and learn something about the problems about reducing anything in a large landscape. Uh, to transfer something in proportion is one of the is one of the tricks of the whole business of doing landscape. How do you reduce things into smaller proportions? Um, the business of perspective. I made a mistake here. I made it too straight, and so I had to change that perspective. That's why I was a little bit um, uh, muddy. But um, this is the way you. This is what you do when you're laying out a painting you must draw. Um, no, no matter what the um, other programs do that say you can just jump right in there and start smearing paint all over canvas without ever drawing is a, a disservice to the audience and I think it also means that uh, whoever is doing instruction possibly doesn't know how to draw themselves. Uh, I find that if you don't draw 
don't start painting. Uh, take the time to learn how to draw what you're doing and then you'll find that not only the painting uh, more enjoyable, but also far more pleasing to live with. And uh, this is certainly not an embarrassment if you're going to give it away to a friend who is going to say to you, where is that place? That's what you try to avoid at all times. Um, the maintenance of this particular structure is not only in the building itself, but it's in the grounds. And here I am drawing, uh, sketching in, a new uh, picket fence which is absolutely wonderful. Yeah, the old picket fence uh, died and so they had to replace it and here is here is the evidence of a brand new picket fence, beautifully done, wonderful craftsmanship and that's something that I'm quite concerned with today in the day of in the era without craft. I'm afraid that uh, craftsmanship is almost taking a vacation from everyone. Now, uh, let me talk a little bit about the sunshine and the uh, extraordinary drama that takes place when the sun is brilliant, as it was on the day that this was shot. Uh, the almost cloudless sky, but just enough clouds to make it an interesting uh, scene. And then the remarkable contrast of a white building in the shade. A white building in the shade, you can see, is tremendous uh, number of tones deeper. And still, if you get this, uh, this sunlit side of the building, it is understood that you know that that's a white building, even though the almost the entire part of half the church is in deep shade, you are, you are making your viewer understand that this is a white structure. So here we have, now this has been drawn in uh, somewhat, um, somewhat quickly because I cheated some a little bit and drew it uh, first in pencil, uh, which, is, uh, which is possible and which is allowed sometimes. But um, I like to confirm the lines by doing them slightly darker in some umber and uh, see whether or not they are in fact uh, at all uh, correct architecturally because there's nothing that drives me nuttier than seeing a, a building that looks like it, first of all, is not possible to be, uh, to be built that way. Way. And secondly, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a skew and it's out of proportion. You've lost the whole flavor of the painting. An architectural painting should pay attention to the architecture. So here we have sketched in all of the, all of the, the windows and the ledges and the, and the general shapes of, these, of this tower. And now, of course, as usual, you start from back to front. Whatever is the furthest away, such as the sky and whatever little cloud formations there are, that takes place first. I'm going to use some quick drying um, uh, white, which is what I usually do in these, uh, in these paintings to tell you that it's important to understand that when you're working out of doors, you are working against time. Because uh, in a matter of hours, this, uh, this sunstruck a side of the building would be would no longer be so and so uh, using quick drying paint is perfectly acceptable for exterior landscape painting and also to get it on as quickly as possible not with a four inch house painting brush that you just finished painting the kitchen with but with a palette knife in which you may or may not leave the texture of the sky or then you can brush it out and get the smoothness if that's what you're after but as you can see you can get a tremendous amount of uh, area covered in a very short amount of time with a palette knife and with deliberate strokes um, rather than uh, running across the side of a canvas with a great big brush and uh, making some sort of a remark that uh, there that's not so bad. Um, I'm not interested ever in seeing something that's not so bad. I would like to see something which is just right. And uh, I'm laying this all out with the trees ahead of time is merely for placement of the objects. You must use the uh, distance of the sky as the background for the, uh, for the application of the objects that come closer and closer towards you until you finally get to the foreground. Um, what I'm using is a pure uh, MG quick drying white and cerulean blue right out of the tube. Uh, usually I like to uh, paint uh, with more subtle colors and I, I'm very faithful to the subtle colors that there are in nature, but when it's as cloudless day uh, in the fall, in the early fall, such as it is on this particular shot, I like to keep the colors just as pure as possible. And uh, of course I think that the color of the sky was as close to pure as you can get. So here we have um, the, uh, the application of the background color, and, um, uh, which is uh, the sky, and then possibly uh, if that little cloud will remain there for a moment or two before the wind blows it away, uh, I, the, the next uh, phase will be the cloud, the thing that's next closest to you. 
It's not hard to figure out how to do this. All you have to do is to remember what's furthest away, the sky or the cloud. And I, 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 there's no point in my telling anybody what that is. Um, putting this in putting this in in order to smooth it out, which I'm going to do, because uh, there are certain times when I want to see a painting with the smooth style. Other times, as you may know, I've been doing uh, palette knife work here and liking it very much, but this is, uh, the, the plan is to not mix the textures, but, uh, but to keep them fairly consistent, and that's a brush, that's a brush technique. Um, the Methodist Church, uh, whether it's of interest to anybody but me, is the, is the little church on the hill in which I was married quite a long time ago. And the inside of it is extremely simple, handsome, direct, a very honest decor, a wonderful looking choir loft. And because these windows right here face east, uh, usually uh, on a Sunday morning, this, uh, this church is bathed in sunshine. It come, there are no stained glass windows in this particular church. I'm not sure whether the Methodist Church ever does have stained glass windows. I know that the um, Episcopalians, the, the high Episcopalians, uh, do. The Catholics, of course, uh, go totally bananas with, um, with stained glass window. But I think that the Methodists and the well, is it the uh, Presbyterian? I'm not sure, but uh, if anybody cares to put me on the carpet for this, that's fine. But this church has no stained glass window whatsoever. And um, the simplicity of the interior is quite wonderful. The wood is, is uh, all, a lot of it is painted, but a lot of it is also natural. And so if anybody is interested in this particular 1870s structure, when Setauket was a mere baby, um, it had been settled since the, the late 1600s, but there was all not very much activity going on here in the way of human habitation in the 1870s. I mean, this church was probably alone on the hill at the time. And uh, now, of course, uh, from you can see by the monitor and the shot that you're looking at as I'm doing this, the traffic is, uh, as the comic strip says, terrific. There are uh, There is a continuous uh, mess of traffic up there. And uh, it, it, I doubtlessly will get more and more so as the years go by. But it stands uh, in its pristine position here at the top of this hill uh, overlooking uh, the lower part of Route 25A in the village of Setauket. So, here is the layout. Let's see whether or not that little cloud has disappeared. There was a cloud there in the beginning, and I'm going to pretend that it's still there because I talked about it, and uh, there's no sense in not, not following up what you say. A cloud uh, many times uh, perplexes people because they, well, they don't quite understand the formation of a cloud, but there are clouds that don't have formation. They are merely a uh, collection of wispy things up there uh, that uh, are you know, uh, amorphous in shape and fuzzy on the edges. And so why don't we just put uh, just sort of a suggestion of a, of a little wispy late summer, early fall cloud on the wet paint. This will, this will give you the, uh, the, the, the sort of, um, the sort of, the absolutely essential fuzzy look that you need uh, where the clouds are not what you might say great western Grand Canyon type of clouds. They have to be just very subtly put in and blending almost uh, on the bottom of the cloud. Underneath here where the cloud is, uh, where the bottom of the cloud takes place, it should blend right into the sky. Next time there's a little wispy cloud uh, within view, do look at it and see whether or not that particular one you're looking at, because they have a tendency to change, uh, blends into the uh, the rest of the sky, and if you if you notice that, you'll find that the painting of a cloud is not as complex nor as terrifying as it may have been uh, prior to that particular observation. Observation, uh, that's what I keep stressing here. Not copy, but observation. Uh, it, it it makes the task of painting easier, incredibly enough. A lot of people say, no, I have to have that picture that I'm copying. I understand what I'm looking at. But um, you don't get the same feeling for proportion and color changes when you copy somebody else's painting or when you copy somebody's photograph. Just it's a no-no. Anyway, uh, in a short amount of time, something has happened here. There has been, uh, there has been the application of uh, three quarters of the painting, which has taken place in a comparatively short place of time, space of time. The reason that the rest of it is going to take some more time is because it's 
complex. There is a, a rather amazing huge tree, just huge. It is almost the same size in volume as the entire uh, church building. And if you look at it, you'll see it comes to approximately here on the monitor, as you can tell. That is an enormous tree. I believe it's a maple. My son would object to it because it's a, probably a, an alien, as he says. It's, a, it's not an American maple, it's probably a Norwegian maple, and to him, those things uh, are aliens and are intruding on our own environment. But anyway, it is nevertheless a maple that happens to turn a perfectly wonderful color um, at the right time of year, which is within the next few weeks. And it dominates uh, this, uh, not dominates, but it certainly is one of the major uh, forms in this particular composition. Uh, I'm not putting this on with a uh, with a huge brush and whacking the canvas with a, with 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 gestures for, uh, full of paint. I'm putting them on deliberately. The uh, the anatomy of this tree is that it has little pointy things at the top. The branches have sent out long pointy leaf-filled branches, and that gives you the anatomy of this tree. It can't be just any tree. It has to be that tree. And uh, and, and I keep trying to to emphasize that when you are working from life, you are going to find yourself a, as a recorder or a reporter. And a reporter is accurate, uh, if he's any kind of a reporter. And this tree is going to tell anybody who looks at this painting that it is, in fact, a great big, wonderful-looking Norwegian maple. Um, uh, accuracy. Uh, I don't want it to sound as though it's a real pain kind of attitude, but accuracy is what landscape painting in the realist form is all about. If you're not accurate, then you are not a realist. Then you are an impressionist, and that's okay too, but it should not pass as a realist, figurative style of painting. Uh, well, I've gotten the signal that we're going to take a very short break, so I will take a short break and be back in a jiffy. The hilltop with the church on it, uh, the I think it's called the United Methodist Church of Setauket. Uh, I'll check with that a little bit later. Um, the dramatic effect of these, of these New England churches is probably w one of the more uh, often uh, given reasons for people to go traveling uh, in New England. New England seems to be the magnet for uh, tourists who want to see New England in its New Englandish form. Long Island is a part of New England. Uh, we all know that, and there's no question about it. And so this uh, little touch of what you might call northern New England is right here on the island. Um, it's a, it's, it's a, it has a particular flavor. It is definitely a period in American history architecturally, which is uh, instantly recognizable. The little white church on the hill surrounded by great, wonderful, shady, uh, rich looking uh, old trees is, um, is something that uh, is, the, is the tourist attraction from here to the top part of Maine. Uh, we got it right here in our own uh, Suffolk County. So 
um, when I talk about going out and finding um, places to paint, that's what I mean. I mean to I mean to point out that with a little bit of observation, uh, you can find everything that you need without getting into a car and uh, going north to find it. We've got New, Eng New England right here on this 125 mile long island, which is, uh, you know, adjacent to the uh, largest capital city in the world. So we have it and, uh, and I've chosen to paint it for my, for, not for my life's work because I have now moved to another area, but I sure painted this for a powerfully long time. What I've done while I was talking is I was preparing to put the sunny side of this tree, which is the side that's been catching the light, and to prepare the background for it by putting this darker tree, which is behind it. And so the sun, now, now the, uh, the lighter side of the tree is, uh, I'm able to use what I call my layering technique, it is somewhat subtle. The tree has not turned yet, um, but uh, that's imminent. And within the next few weeks, this tree will turn, well, I believe this turns a, a brilliant yellow, uh, but it also could have touches of orange. However, it's, um, uh, hidden down here against this dark tree is a little uh, burgeoning uh, dogwood, I believe, that is going to be uh, you know, turning very bright in a very uh, in a very short period of time, maybe a matter of days. If the weather if the weather suddenly turns dark, that little tree is going to turn brilliant pink red. So, but here is the um, here is this uh, great wonderful Norway maple um, that is uh, dominating uh, a good deal a good part of this canvas. Uh, as you'll notice uh, in the monitor, that it it isn't light all the way around, and it sort of has mottled looks of darkness as the uh, as the branches do whatever it is that they do on these great huge trees. This tree, well, when I first uh, came to Setauket a very, very long time ago, this little tree, this uh, the great big tree, was no higher than this roof line. Uh, and um, of course in its wonderful, um, way, unstoppable way, if it does not succumb to somebody wanting to cut it down or if it doesn't succumb to uh, disease, uh, will in fact just quietly uh, remain uh, growing. And here we we have we are the recipients of those of those magical things that trees do, and namely to become so architecturally important to the landscape. Uh, trees, of course, I, I, I think that uh, there's nothing, uh, as a landscape painter, I have been, uh, I've been concerned and watching trees for a very long period of time. Oh, there's a little sort of a branch that's picking up some light as it sticks out there. I love to see that happen because when it does happen, it means that some careful observation has taken place. Um, somewhere uh, down at the base of that is a little, uh, is that little dogwood. Maybe I'll see it a little bit later, but the other tree that is in the distance that is uh, that it need, needs to be put in right now is this one up here, which is a kind of a shapeless and sort of nice looking thing. I believe it's a locust, and um, I, I sound almost like somebody who is uh, who is an uh, arboreal student. Uh, but I'm I, I think that uh, trees ought to be understood and they ought to be recognizable, and you ought to know what the heck you're painting when you look at them. So I do believe that this is probably a nice one of these lacy looking locusts over here uh, behind this other maple that is in front of the church. Uh, the reason that I keep doing this is to tell you about the process which goes into this, namely uh, the uh, timing, uh, that the background one goes in, background ones go in first, and of course uh, if you're out in the public painting and the public comes and watches and wonders why don't you just get down to the business of doing the church, it's because uh, the average person who does not paint doesn't understand that you do it in the this fashion, that you come forward with your subject matter. So, oh, I picked up some blue without wanting to. Oops, okay, uh, we'll wash that off a little bit later. Well, maybe right now. Um, I'm going to get to this building now before the end of this program. The, the, uh, the, this is the first part of a two part uh, uh, program. Part one is the drawing, the laying out, the background, and some of the details in the foreground. And then part two will come when the architectural rendering of the building itself, which is the commanding uh, motif in this particular painting, takes place. I, um, 
I hope that uh, whatever I have done is comprehensible at this point. Oh, four minutes, good. Uh, I have a wonderful clock here. It's a human being with a hand that shows four fingers uh, when I need to know, and that's always extremely helpful. I notice that my perspective is, is um, wanting. My perspective, uh, according to what I see on the monitor, is not sharp enough here on this top line. Therefore, I'm going to take it, uh, I'm going to take it down and give it a different direction. Uh, correcting things in the pro in, when it's in work is absolutely essential, and it ought to be it ought to be understood that uh, corrections have to take place because we're all in this together. See, I don't talk very much when I do that. That line had to take place, and this one has to come a little bit further, like so. Anyway, so. Um, the whiteness of the building. Let me get into that one. The whiteness of the building, uh, I'm going to make sure that it is extremely white because the sun is brilliant and one of my very favorite American painters was Edward Hopper. If you ever have an opportunity, if you're in the library and don't know what to do with yourself, or you're waiting for the children or waiting for something, just go thumb through the art books and see if you can find the uh, works of Edward Hopper, H-O-P-P-E-R. He was a painter of the American scene and a more wonderful and warm-hearted painter you can't imagine. I'm talking about, I don't know anything about his private life. I did meet him once, but I do know that his paintings are about as uh, about as American as you can get, and absolutely wonderful looking. They are uh, they are honest, sun bathed, absolutely all struck by the sunshine, and uh, I can't I can't uh, give you any better encouragement than to go and look at some of uh, Edward Hopper's American paintings. He has painted everything from the streets of New York to the lighthouses of New England to little farmhouses and wonderful white sunny looking buildings. You'll notice in the monitor that the uh, building in the behind this church is white also but it's consumed in shade. Therefore um, in, in goes the pale gray. Uh, just I, I'm using pure uh, lamp black in a little bit of white for the gray. No subtlety here. Um, I don't see any creamy colors. I just see a lot of um, a lot of just sort of gray in the background here in this in these buildings behind the church. Now you see they're they're all painted pure white, but because uh, light do, doing what it does has turned those uh, those um, white places uh, gray. Now I'm, I'm filling in because I made that too wide. Let me see, what is that? Yes, there's a little sort of a nice um, bay window here, so this, is, this, this doesn't come out that far. Well, uh, as usual, I'm, I always complain about the same thing, that there is not enough time to do this. However, a friend of mine who has been a loyal and faithful watcher of this program just came to see me a few minutes before this uh, taping took place. Her name is Annie Schuster. And she told me that um, she learns a great deal from what I say and do on this program, and I was always, I'm always very glad to hear that. Uh, she says that she watches some of the programs over and over again because they're broadcast over and over again, and every time she finds that there's something that she has missed before and finds it, um, finds it very helpful to be able to see them again. Well. On that note, and having sort of teased you into seeing the uh, progress of this, um, of this painting of the uh, Methodist Church in Setauket, I hope that you uh, will tune in the next time to see part two, the final exciting conclusion, and maybe that you learn something in the process. Thanks again, and tune in when you can. Bye-bye.